Hey guys, this is Cross for Double Cross Games, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a switch that can control other switches and or actors on your stage by simply clicking on the objects and assigning them into a variable that will be exposed right on the top. Uh, basically, it's what I have here. This will be our like master switch here, and when I press it, we get a second switch that appears, and this one shouldn't really do anything because it's just a copy. All right, here we go. Uh, we are in Unreal 4.25, and this is the third person template. First thing we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and right click, Blueprint Class. We're going to create an actor. We're gonna call that actor Master Switch. And our master, we're going to double click on our master switch and we are going to bring it over here so you guys can see it. We're going to add a static mesh so that we can actually interact with this guy visibly. Add component, static mesh. We can just use a box for now, but you guys can use whatever you want. And we're also going to want to add a box collision. And this is going to be our switch range. This is going to determine how far we can be from this switch and still press it. And we're going to set it to 200, so it's pretty easy. Uh, here in the box extent, you can change that pretty easily. Compile, save. We're going to add a few variables to our master switch. What we want this switch to do is to be able to communicate with other switches and or actors. So we're gonna create a variable called sub switches. And in the variable type, we're gonna change that to master switch. We're gonna change that to an array as well. That will give us the ability to have more than one switch attached to this master switch. And we're going to expose it. What that does is when we drop this guy in, in case you weren't really, in case you didn't know that, when you expose a variable like that, you see how it says sub switches and it has array element zero right now? That's what we did when we turned on this little eyeball. And furthermore, a couple of other things we're going to want is we're going to want to make sure is master switch. We're going to switch that to a Boolean. And then we're going to add one more is power. We're going to go ahead and expose both of those so that when we come out here into the stage, we can click it and we see them right here. And since this is our very first switch, we're going to go ahead and say that he is both the master switch and it is powered. What that allows us to do is it allows us to gate when switches can be activated, not just by proximity, but by whether they're actually powered or being used or you've met the correct gates to turn them on. So if you have a sub switch and the master switch that's attached to it isn't powered, then it makes sense that the sub switch wouldn't be powered either. All right, next, we wanna be able to interact with the switch though. And right now we can't do that. So we went ahead and clicked on our box collision and scrolled all the way to the bottom of the details panel to on component begin overlap. We're going to press the big green button. It's going to give us this event. This event, we can then drag from other actor and we will do cast to third person character. This would be your player character. It's just that in the third person tutorial or template, the third person character is the default. So we'll just use that. And we'll do it one more time, switch, range, and in the component end overlap, we'll add one of those as well. Control C, Control V. 
Now, now when our third person character walks in range, this will fire and we can get something to actually happen out here. So let's go to our third person character real quick because we want our inputs to always be in our player character or in our controller. We don't want the inputs to take place in the, in the actors that we drop on the stage because it, it just gets messy. So we'll open our third person character and I kind of already did it here. I'm gonna go ahead and just kill it so you guys can see it from scratch. Yeah, so compile, save. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put an input in here. Normally, you would go to projects, uh, inputs, and create an input action and set it to whatever keystroke you want. But for simplicity, we'll just do E key. And we'll select the keyboard E key because it seems to be the default for most games. When we press this key, we want to interact with the box that we're overlapping. And you'll see some people do get overlapping actors and then cast to the button to the switch, but there's an easier way to do it. You can just create a variable, and this can be switch in range, I believe is what I called it before. And we can make this variable a master switch object reference and what that does for us is it gives us all of the access to a master switch reference from inside of our character all we have to do is populate this variable at the appropriate time first thing we want to do when we use references like this though is check if is valid because it won't be valid all the time, and if you try to access it when it's not valid, you'll get some errors. If it is valid, though, we can drag out of switch in range and do whatever we want. But we haven't set that up yet. So we go back to our master switch, and we're gonna create a custom event, and we'll call it on button press. And while we're here, we're gonna drag from our third person character. We're gonna do get, oh, I'm sorry, set switch in range. That variable we just created, we can set it right here and we will set it to self. We're inside the master switch. So when we overlap the master switch, we want the switch to tell the character, hey, this is me. This is who you want to talk to. And then we're gonna control C and control V to drop another setter for the same variable. In the end overlap, we're gonna set it back down to, we're gonna set it back to blank. So that will make it so that when we walk away from the switch, we can no longer talk to it. It'll reset the variable for us. Now when the button gets pressed, we're gonna go ahead and do a couple of things. We're gonna check if the button is powered. If it's not power, we're gonna say print string, no power. If it is powered, we're gonna check, is this a master switch? Hmm. If it is a master switch, then what we want to do is we want to grab all the sub switches. We are going to, oh, for those of you who don't know, I just held the key, the F key and left click to create a for each loop. Sorry about that. It's really easy to forget once you do it once you do it a lot, you forget that not everybody knows the hotkeys. Um, so 
we have our sub switches and since our sub switches are actually master switches as well we can get our is powered variable from them and go set is powered we can set that puppy to true to true if it is not a master switch then we want the switch to do something you know something for now we'll say we'll add a function and call switch switch activated and by default We'll print string. And we'll say hmm, this switch did something. All right, so we'll go back to our master switch in our event graph. And so now what should happen yeah, if it's not a master switch, we want to call switch activated like so. Now we have all this stuff all set up. Our we're going to go ahead and turn these off and test them. So the first thing we should see is no power. And that's not even working. So why is that not working? Is it because I didn't tell it to? That is correct. So switch in range, and we're in our third person character. That reference from switch in range, we have to drag out of it and actually do call on button press. Notice how the switch activated is also there. That's not the one we want to call. If you double click on these lines, you can make a reroute node without having to look for it, by the way. All right, now let's give that a try. We should get a no power this time. No power, awesome. So now we escape. We're gonna turn it, we're gonna turn the power back on, hit play, and we, yep, this switch did something. All right, but we want this guy to be a master switch and do something else. So we're gonna turn it into a master switch and we are gonna make a second switch. So real quick, we're gonna right click, create child blueprint, and this is gonna be our sub switch. We're gonna go ahead and drop our sub switch in there and it is not going to be powered. It is not going to be a master switch, but if we click our master switch right here, see where we have the sub switches in the default? We're going to hit the plus to add an array element. We're going to click on this little eyedropper and notice how it doesn't let me click on anything except my sub switch. Technically, you could also click on the master switch, but that gets into creating endless loops and you probably don't want to do that. So now that we have our sub switch in there, we'll do, we'll go ahead and set up a little bit of something. In our sub switch, we're gonna grab our mesh. We're gonna make it invisible. So we're gonna turn the visibility off on our mesh so that we have a, vis a visual representation of what's going on here. And then, we're gonna go to our master switch. And if you're a master switch, you're not only gonna turn the power on, but you're also gonna take your sub switches and you're gonna make them visible. So we'll set visibility for the static mesh to true. And that will actually give us what we had at the beginning. This is just a visual representation. The switch should already work. 
So if we press play here, we walk over to our master switch. Notice that the other one is invisible. And we press E, and it makes our other button turn on. And if we were to go to this button and click it, the power is on. This switch did something. Now, we made a child of the sub switch. This is a little bit of a bonus. Uh, some of you might be wondering, well, you said you could use these, these switches to, you know, do stuff, not just whatever. And you can. You see that that function we created here, this switch activated function that gets called automatically, is in all of our sub switches. So we can actually go to the function. Oh, sorry. We can actually overwrite that function right here. And where? What did I call it again? Switch activated. And so if you click on that, it shows you switch activated for the parent and whatever else you want to add here that you want this switch to do. And it will work. In addition to that, the same way that we added, the same way that we added these sub switches, we can add any actor to a sub switch. So you could essentially make a door and have that be an actor. Just make it an actor reference. And you can legitimately put all of the doors you want in this array the same way we did with the master. So here's our sub switch. And so now we have our so our, our sub-switch can have sub-switches of its own. It can also have these random actors that, uh, since I set it to an actor reference, it could literally be anything. So long as you intelligently use your references in this function, within this function, because you can grab your actors right here, press F, do the exact same thing we did with the sub switches and have them do whatever right then and there. So you could then activate your door or use the same exact system that we used on the master switch to activate the sub switches, except you would do it in this function, in the switch activated, and it will work as soon as you put them on there. And that's it, guys. I Hope this was useful. If you guys have any questions, uh, put them down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.